Virtual reality is becoming more and more advanced in the modern era. Some say we'll soon be spending most of our time living inside a computer-generated world where anything is possible. But what if that already happened? What if you're living inside of a virtual reality right now and you just don't realize it? This is the basis for something called simulation theory, a widely respected hypothesis among philosophers and scientists alike. Mainstream figures like Elon Musk and Neil deGrasse Tyson have helped popularize this theory within the last few years. 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. Now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. If you assume any rate of improvement at all, the games will become indistinguishable from reality. So given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC or whatever, the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. Various science fiction films have also played with this concept, perhaps most notably 1999's The Matrix. What is The Matrix? Control. The Matrix is a computer-generated dream world, built to keep us under control in order to change a human being into this. No. I don't believe it. It's not possible. But is there any truth to it? Could we really be living in a simulation? Where's the evidence? Let's find out. In many ways, simulation theory has been around since ancient times. During the 4th century BC, the famous Chinese philosopher Zhuangzi famously awoke from a dream in which he imagined himself as a butterfly. He then realized that there was no way to know for sure whether he had truly woken from a dream. What if he was a butterfly, dreaming that he was a human and not the other way around? Buddhism, one of the oldest religions on the planet, teaches us that almost everything we see and experience is an illusion, even our consciousness. In an effort to conceptualize reality, many ancient cultures described our universe as a painting or book created by the gods. It could even be argued that aspects of Christianity and Judaism offer subtle hints at a virtual reality. Consider the words, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. Some scholars believe that the correct literal translation is actually something like, God spoke the word light, and there was light. The word light has been compared to a line of computer code, a command that a programmer might use to initiate a system. The implication is that someone entered this command and booted up our reality. Of course, our concept of simulated reality has evolved considerably since ancient times, especially since now we have video games that are becoming more indistinguishable from real life. Haven't you ever watched a movie before? Shoot the tires. Say no more. However, the first person to really popularize simulation theory was Nick Bostrom back in 2003, when the first Call of Duty won Game of the Year. Bostrom wrote, We would be rational to think that we are likely among the simulated minds rather than among the original biological ones. Therefore, if we don't think that we are currently living in a computer simulation, we are not entitled to believe that we will have descendants who will run lots of such simulations of their forebears. Bostrom's theory is a little different in that he believes that most of us are actually simulated, artificially intelligent consciousnesses that exist only within a simulated reality. In other words, we're not real humans. Putting that detail aside, the main crux of the argument remains the same. If we assume that technology advances over time, we will one day create a virtual reality that is indistinguishable from the rest of the world. And if we know that this development is going to happen at some point, then we can assume that it has already happened. 
People have suggested various versions of simulation theory. For example, some believe that the universe itself is a quantum computer, while others believe that the simulation exists within the universe, operating with its own separate system. Some might also argue that if a civilization becomes so advanced that it reaches the post-human stage, there might be people who yearn to return to the good old days. Imagine being effectively immortal and having your consciousness downloaded into a computer system or a robotic skeleton. Wouldn't you want to know what it felt like to have a body again? Wouldn't you feel a sense of regret knowing you could never experience simple things like breathing the morning air or touching someone you loved? Wouldn't you want to create a simulation that allow you to return to that life? But is there any evidence that a reality is a simulation? One of the most common features of video games today is something called procedural generation. Common in open world sandbox games where the player is free to explore vast areas, this feature helps reduce the computer power needed to run the game. For example, you might be exploring one corner of the map and everything might seem extremely detailed, but on the other side of the game world, these details are not present. It is only when you actually travel to the other corner of the map that the game loads these details. Sometimes games struggle to load details in time, especially when you're moving very fast. The key point here is that the reality of the video game only loads when someone is observing it. If there is no one looking at a hidden corner of the world, then there is no need to load it. As it turns out, there is some evidence that suggests that our reality could work in the same way. This is known as the observer effect. Basically, the observer effect occurs when someone changes reality simply by looking at it. Quantum physics has discovered that quantum phenomena can actually change when it is being observed. Essentially, photons behave differently depending on whether they are being measured or left to their own devices. The implication is that consciousness can directly alter reality. One of the most famous thought experiments in quantum physics is known as Schrodinger's cat. It involves a cat sealed in a box with a radioactive substance, with no one knowing for sure whether the cat is alive or dead. According to Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, the cat could be considered both alive and dead at the same time until someone actually opens the box to see for themselves. Erwin Schrodinger intended to point out the absurdity of the Copenhagen interpretation with this thought experiment. But in many ways, it had the opposite effect. Proponents of the Copenhagen interpretation seem to suggest that our observation that actually creates reality. Some point out that the universe seems to operate according to a set of rules that is suspiciously similar to a computer program. For example, the Fibonacci sequence is present in virtually all living things, even the shape of galaxies. Also known as the golden spiral, this shape can be found in plants, storms, and seashells. We even use the golden spiral in architecture and art. If this sequence is the foundational building block for everything that comes into existence, you have to ask yourself whether our reality is all that different from a computer program that relies on a specific code to generate objects. While there are many arguments against simulation theory, there's only one that really stands out. We don't actually have the technology to create a virtual reality that is completely indistinguishable from everyday life. Because our video games aren't yet at this level, we can't assume that we will one day create a convincing virtual reality. We may encounter technological limitations that make such an accomplishment impossible. Until we actually create this perfect virtual reality, we won't know for sure how likely it is that our own reality is also a simulation. In short, we don't even know if it's possible. Yet, one of the key foundations of simulation theory is the assumption that our eventual creations of indistinguishable virtual reality is an absolute certainty. But here's the thing, a virtual reality doesn't necessarily need to be perfect. Have you been to Walmart and seen the people there? We could be living in a dumbed down version of the real world without even realizing it. Maybe we have become so immersed in the simulation that we have forgotten about what reality actually looks like. Perhaps if we one day leave this hypothetical simulation and return to the real world, we'll realize that textures, colors, and other sensory details are actually much more vivid. So is all this a simulation? The scientific evidence is considerable, and one could probably debate the subject for weeks. But at the end of the day, at the end of the video, there's really no way of knowing the truth. Until, of course, you wake up.